All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. We're going to be talking about some must-have, well, not must-have, but really nice accessories to go with your table saw. Starting off, we're going to hit with some of the safety precautions. Obviously, safety glasses. I have a pair of glasses at every tool in the shop, and I have a drawer filled with about five or six other pairs of safety glasses. So, by far, you always want to have safety glasses on when you operate a table saw. Keeps dust out your eyes. Trust me, you don't want to go to the ER because of something stupid, even if it's a seven-second cut or, oh, I just need to make one more. Just wear the damn things. Don't chance it. It's a lot cheaper to waste seven seconds of time than it is to waste a couple hours and a couple hundred dollars to go get something out your eye at the ER. Next. We're going to keep our little fingers out of the saw blade with push sticks. Now these aren't the greatest. The plastic ones, they have flex to them. They can bend. They're not the greatest. Um, it doesn't matter if the blade comes in contact with them because, I mean, that saw blade doesn't care what it's got in front of it. It's going to chew through plastic. Same thing with wood. It's going to chew through wood. It's better that it chews through this than your hands. These are a different style. It's what I started with. I can't say they're great and I can't say they're bad. They have their place, though. Sometimes these are one of the better ones to use compared to something like this. This is one that I made for ripping cutting board stock. It has a nice flat bottom. It's got a good purchase on the face of the board, but it doesn't rely on that to actually catch the board. It uses these quarter inch plywood shims that I can raise and lower and cut new ones for, and that acts as a hook on the back of my board to help push it through. This is one that I made out of a piece of cherry. It's about an inch and a half thick. Nice feel in the hand. In the same style, I have one made out of walnut. This just has a hook cut into it. When it gets chewed up, I can just take my bandsaw, cut a little bit off, and cut a new shelf in it. And it works the same way as this one, but just made out of walnut. And it's a little bit thinner. This one's about 7 eighths of an inch or an inch wide. So I can get between my blade and my fence without having to worry about it. Going in the same way of safety, you got different table inserts. Now, the one that's in here was originally a zero clearance. It's been eaten up because it's been used and abused. Uh, zero clearance is really nice. It helps mitigate tear out. And like I said, one day I will make a video on how to make one. This one was the first one I did. This one was the second one I did. And as you can tell, uh, there was some fitment issues, so that's why this has blue tape on it. And the one that the saw came with, I don't know if you'll be able to tell in the video. Actually, you might be able to. It's bent. This thing is crookeder than a Jaybird. So, I don't know what's going on with that. That's why I made one. But you can pull them out. This is the one that I use with my dado stack. I am going to make one for a dado stack, so I'll make a video showing how I make a zero clearance insert and how to make a regular one like this or a zero clearance for a dado stack too. And I'll probably go ahead and make like four or five of them so I can replace these, get them out the way, and move on with my life. So get that out the way. This is something that some of y'all might be looking at in the background and think, why in the world does he have a can of paste wax on the table saw? Have you ever noticed that sometimes you could be pushing something along and you just feel like it's binding up and catching on something, but you look at it, the work isn't being burned by the blade, but the wood just isn't feeding through the saw nicely? Take some paste wax, put it down on the table, let it sit up for a minute and then go back and buff it off and your boards will slide right across the table really easily 
It not only helps the board slide, but it also helps prevent moisture getting into the metal and rusting your cast iron top. Um, case in point is that over there where I got something on my saw and didn't wipe it off in time and uh, it rusted. So doesn't work all the time, but it is better than nothing. So I'll set that out the way and we're going to move into another gadget for table saws. This is a Wixie digital angle gauge. You set it on the table of your saw, cut it on, zero it out, gets a perfect zero degree in plane with the level of your saw, and then you raise your blade up, stick it on the side of your saw, and you can dial it in to the exact angle that you want. You want an exact 22 and a half degree? Well, you got an exact 22 and a half degree with this. You want an exact 45 or 90? Dial it in with this, thank yourself later. Do not go off that little regular gauge on the front of your cabinet saw. It is not accurate. So, moving on down the line, we have blades. Putting in a sharp blade or a different type of blade will make your life so much easier. Now, this is just the two outside blades from my dado stack. A dado stack is really nice if you want to do box joints or if you want to cut out grooves for a shelf to go in a cabinet or a groove for a drawer bottom. Instead of shifting your fence over and making 25 cuts with one of these, you can do it in one pass with this. This goes from a quarter inch up to like 13 sixteenths or something like that. You have to make sure your arbor is big enough to have a dado saw or a dado stack put onto it, I mean. so. Dado stack is really nice to have. Is it necessary? No. Um, once you do a few things that involve cutting grooves, you'll probably buy a dado stack. They can be pricey. The Diablo or Freud one is roughly about 100 bucks. I like it, though. It's been great. So as far as other blades go, your general purpose stuff, they do have a combination blade that does ripping and cross-cutting. It doesn't excel it either, but it does both of them pretty well. So keeping that in mind, you have dedicated ripping blades. This is a 24 tooth ripping blade. It does extremely well. I love using that to cut cutting board strips. Couldn't ask for a better blade, especially for the price point. I believe this is about 30 bucks, and this one's also about 30. Uh, you can get dedicated cross-cut blades for a table saw for use with one of these miter jigs over here. And I believe the cross-cut blade is like a 60 tooth. And that works really well for cross-cuts, especially if you're doing stuff like uh, cutting the cheeks on a tenon. Or if you need to make a picture frame or something like that and you want to use a miter gauge. They also have blades that have a higher tooth count, like a 70 or an 80, and that's for cutting your plywoods with thin veneers that you don't want to have chip out, or your blades that can cut melamine so you don't chip that laminated strip on top of the fiberboard core. So lastly is going to be this. This right here is a really nice, really expensive miter gauge. I understand that this is out of the price range of some people. But with me running a business and using it so often, I needed something that was nice, repeatable, and heavy built. And this Incra Miter 1000 is amazing. All you got to do is loosen the handle, and you can loosen that. And if I want a 22 and a half degree miter, it has a little claw that slides into this. Tighten that down. Tighten my handle down, and now I can cut perfect 22 and a half degree miters on the table saw. It's got an aluminum extruded fence that you can slide left and right. It's got a stop block that you can put on it. If you want to attach an auxiliary fence to it, it has T track on the front side and the back side. By far, this is one of the things that I use the most with my table saw, along with a dado stack. I mean, if you don't have one, you don't know what you're missing out on. And before I had it, I was like, there's no way it's going to be that useful. No, no, it, 
completely changes your table saw. I mean, it completely changes it into a different animal. It's a whole new ball game once you get one of these. And I understand that something like that is expensive. But at the same time, the entire way through me building out my shop and my business, I've gone with the mindset of buy nice or buy twice. And there are certain things you should spend money on, and I believe that this is one of them. So I hope this video gave you all some ideas about what you might be lacking or what you might be interested in and help expand your capabilities in your shop. Um, I'll try to do a few more videos like this for some other tools, and I'll catch you all guys next time. Thanks for watching.